quickest way to understand this is to start from the classic browser web server model where the user types in a URL in a browser to request a web page from a web server. The server responds with HTML, which we can generate a web page from, and that's then displayed in the browser. All designed with a human being as the consumer of the resource. Now to help you understand a REST API, think of the API as a separate or additional program on that web server that provides resources for other computers. This API Endpoint Explorer represents that client computer making a call to an API on the server. What comes back in the response is a text representation of the resource on the server. Look at this in your browser. The URL identifies where the resource is located. One of the headers specifies how the resource on the server should be represented when it's returned. And the method tells the server what operation to carry out on that resource. In this instance, we just get the resource. This first key concept to grasp is that the browser, not you, is telling the server how it wants the resource that resides on the server to be represented when it receives it in text stroke HTML, because that's the format the browser can turn into a web page that you can then understand. Critical to this is the accept header. This tells the server what type of concept the client will accept and what type of concept the server should send back. It controls essentially the resource or the data on the server and how that should be represented in the response. In this instance, the data from the server is represented in text stroke HTML because this is what the browser needs to display the data to you. Different client computers may want to see the data represented in different formats. And this can be done using the same accept header we saw being sent by our browser. The header controls how the resource will be represented to the client. Change the accept header and the resource on the server, or rather the representation of the underlying resource, comes back in a different format. The underlying resource on the server could be a file or a record in a database, but the API is said to be restful if it can support representing that resource in different formats. All you need to understand now is state transfer. Click on the next video and I'll demonstrate this to you.